Hello, welcome to EPG Patshala, course Legal Literacy. I am Maruk Edenwala, a lawyer, one of your course teachers. This subject is Family Law, Part 4. This module deals with the law on adoption. Adoption. The topic of adoption falls under the personal laws or family laws. Hence, it depends upon the religion the person follows. Certain religions do not allow adoption, others do not deal with adoption. In India, it's only the Hindus who under the Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act 1956 may adopt a child. Muslim, Parsis, Christians and Jews, their personal law does not allow or deal with adoption, hence they take a child in guardianship. A child is taken in guardianship under the Guardians and Wards Act 1890. What is the difference between a taking a child in adoption and taking a child in guardianship we shall look at later. The Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 has an entire chapter that deals with adoption. It is the secular law of adoption in India. The Central Adoption Resource Agency, or in short, called CARA, lays down certain guidelines which require to be followed for inter-country and intra-country adoption. Inter-country adoption is foreign adoption, whereas intra-country adoption is adoption within the country. Today, the adoption regulations of 2017, which have been issued by CARA, govern adoption. Now let us look at certain provisions of the Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act 1956. It is applicable to Hindus, Buddhists, Jains and Sikhs. Who can adopt under Hama? Any male who is of sound mind, not a minor. But if he is married, he takes an adoption, but he must get the consent of his wife. A female who is of sound mind, not a minor and not married, or whose marriage is dissolved, may take a child in adoption. It is important to note that regarding a married couple, it is the husband who takes the child in adoption and the wife merely consents. Who can give the child in adoption under Hama? The parent or guardian of the child can give the child in adoption. If the father gives the child in adoption, he must have the consent of the mother. A mother can only give a child in adoption in certain circumstances. It is important to note that if a child doesn't have parents, the guardian can give the child in adoption only with the permission of the court. Conditions of valid adoption. First condition, if adoptive parent as a biological child cannot adopt child of same sex. For example, under Hama, if the couple has a biological daughter, then they can only ad adopt a male child. If they want to adopt another girl child, they will have to take such child in guardianship. Second, if single male or female is adopting a child of the opposite sex, there should be an age gap of 21 years. The adoptive parent should be 21 years elder than the child adopted, which is of the opposite sex. The same child cannot be simultaneously adopted by two or more persons. This is but obvious because the prospective adoptive parents become the biological parents of the child and the child cannot have a set of two parents. What is the effect of adoption? An adopted child shall be deemed to be the child of his or her adoptive father, mother for all purposes with effect from the date of the adoption and from such date all the ties of the child in the family of his or her birth shall be deemed to be severed and replaced by those created by the adoption in the adopted family. 1. On adoption, the ties of the child with the biological parents comes to an end. On adoption, the child becomes the part of the adoptive family. I would like to further explain. If a child has inherited property from his biological parents, he doesn't require to give it up. He can retain 
the property which he inherited as a legal heir of the biological family. But once he's adopted, all his rights to the biological family come to an end. Now he will has a right to inherit from his adoptive family. Now let us look at the Guardians and Wards Act. Who appoints a guardian? The guardian is appointed by a court. It, a guardian is appointed by a civil court, maybe a district court, maybe a family court, or maybe the high court. A guardian is appointed for the person or property of a minor, or for both the person and property of the minor. Who can make an application for guardianship? It may be made by a relative, a friend, or any other person desirous to become a guardian of the child. In certain cases, a collector too may be appointed as a guardian of the child. For example, in case of a natural disaster where both the parents of the child have died and the government has announced an ex gratia payment, the collector will be appointed a guardian of the child to safeguard the ex gratia payment and to ensure that the child is able to enjoy such money on attaining majority. In certain cases, officers of the courts too have been appointed as guardian. The most important principle is that with regards to guardianship, the welfare of the child is of paramount importance. The preference of the child should also be heard if the child is of such age where he is able to express the same. It is important to remember that a guardian is a mere caretaker of the ward. A ward does not have the same rights as a biological child, whereas an adoptive child has the same rights as a biological child. This is the main difference between taking a child in guardianship and taking a child in adoption. A responsibility of the guardian ends once the ward attains the age of majority, whereas the rights of an adoptive child continue in the same manner as that of a biological child. Hence, if a guardian dies without making a will, the ward will not have any right to his the guardian's property. Whereas if a pair, adoptive parent dies without making a will, the adoptive child will have the same rights as a biological child to the property of the deceased parent. The Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 is the secular law with regards to adoption in our country. The first juvenile legislation which dealt with adoption was the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2000. It dealt with adoption under the chapter Rehabilitation and Social Reintegration. But now we are going to look at certain provisions of the 2015 law. First, it defines adoption under section 2 subsection 2. Adoption means the process to which, through which the adopted child is permanently separated from his biological parents and becomes a lawful child of his adoptive parents with all the rights, privileges and responsibility that are attached to the biological child. So in short, upon adoption, an adopted child becomes and enjoys the same rights and obligations as that of a biological child. Certain terms are also defined under this act. Please read this slide. As I've earlier mentioned, the Central Adoption Resource Authority, or in short CARA, from time to time notifies guidelines or updates guidelines with regards to adoption and as I also earlier mentioned the adoption regulation 2017 today covers the topic of adoption. Chapter 8 of the 2015 Juvenile Justice Act deals with adoption. There are several sections dealing with it. An adoption under this act is covered in different circumstances. One for ensuring right to family to an orphan abandoned or surrendered child. 
It also covers adoption from one relative to another, irrespective of religion. The Child Welfare Committee declares a child legally free for adoption. A parent who, for certain social factors, may wish to surrender a child to adop for adoption. Such surrendering is done before the Child Welfare Committee. It is the Child Welfare Committee who declares a child legally free for adoption. But the Child Welfare Committee must give the must give the biological parents 60 days to reconsider as to whether they want to surrender the child or not. The eligibility of prospective adoptive parents. It could be a couple, but if it's a couple, then you require the consent of both the spouses. Who is a couple? Under the CARA guidelines, they have mentioned that a couple should be a married couple who has had a stable marital relationship for at least two years. A single or divorced person can also adopt, but a single male cannot adopt a girl child, whereas a single female is allowed to adopt a boy child. Any other criteria may be framed by CARA. For example, the CARA has framed a criteria regarding the age of the child and the age of the prospective adoptive parents. For example, they've said if the child is under four years of age, then the cumulative maximum age of the parents should be 90 years or of the single parent as 45 years. So several such other criteria have been laid down. What is the procedure for adoption? More than procedure, this slide deals with the priorities with regards to adoption, which prospective adoptive family will be prioritized. Preference for adoption is given to Indian prospective adoptive parents. So what is being encouraged? inter-country adoption and not foreign adoption. The next preference is given to non-resident Indians or overseas citizens of India or persons of Indian origin. This is very important because you may want to keep the child in a similar milieu on adoption. Inter-country adoption. If no Indian or non-resident Indian is found as a prospective adoptive parent for a child, even after 60 days of searching for such family, then the child may be given and declared legally free for foreign adoption. Order of adoption, the civil court has the powers to pass an order of adoption. Uh, it may be a district court or family court or a city civil court. What should the court consider while passing an order of adoption? That such adoption is for the welfare of the child, that the wishes of the child have been considered and that no payment or consideration has been exchanged for the purpose of adoption. We must keep in mind that no adoption is final till an adoption order has been passed by the court. Effect of adoption. The effect of adoption under juvenile legislation is similar to that under HAMA. The adopted child shall become the child of the adoptive parents and the adoptive parents shall become the parents of the child as if the child has been born to the adoptive parents for all purposes including intestacy with effect from the date on which the adoption order takes effect. And from such date, all ties of the child in the family of his or her birth shall stand severed and replaced by those created by the adoption order in the adopted family. So now the adopted child becomes a part of the adopted family and is to be treated in the same manner as a biological child. Section 80. Section 80 is a penal provision. It penalizes adoption carried out without following the procedure laid down on the law. The punishment is imprisonment up to three years or fine of rupees one lakh or both. The law treats as more stringent an offense when it is committed by a recognized adopted agency. Here the period of imprisonment is increased to one year. This is because a recognized adopted agency has a greater responsibility in following the procedure regarding adoption. 
Now we are going to look at two judgments relating to adoption. One is the Lakshmikan Pandey judgment. The Lakshmikan Pandey judgment is a public interest litigation filed by a lawyer. In this litigation, he was the petitioner was most concerned with foreign adoption and the malpractices which were carried out by agencies. Thanks to this judgment, foreign adoption was streamlined and the Central Adoption Resource Agency was established. In this slide, let us see what the Supreme Court has to say regarding the needs for a for child to a family. Every child has a right to love and be loved and to grow up in an atmosphere of love and affection and of moral and material security. And this is possible only if the child is brought up in a family. The most congenial environment would of course be that of the family of his biological parents. But if for any reason it is not possible for the biological parents or other near relatives to look after the child or the child is abandoned and it is either not possible to trace the parents or the parents are not willing to take care of the child, the next best alternative would be to find adoptive parents for the, right, for the child so that the child can grow up under the loving care and attention of the adoptive parents. The adoptive parents would be the next best substitute for biological parents. So in one way this judgment does recognize the right of the child to a family whether it be a biological family or an adoptive family. This portion of the Lakshmikan Pandey judgment deals with inter-country or foreign adoption and what the, its primary object should be. Next case is a Shabnam Hashmi case. This case is also a PIL. In this case, the, the Supreme Court recognized the Juvenile Justice Act 2000 to be the secular law with regards to adoption. You will see this is a 2014 judgment, hence it was passed prior to the Juvenile Justice Act 2015. It very clearly states that a prospective adoptive parents make a, may take a child in adoption under juvenile legislation. It also goes on to say that this is an enabling legislation. It is not compulsory that every parent has to take a child in adoption under the Juvenile Justice Act. With, with regards to the argument that the right to adoption should fall under right to life under article 21 of the constitution the supreme court said this was not the appropriate time as there was lots of conflicts between the views of different religions but it is important to note that the bombay high court and the kerala high court had said that the right to adoption falls under article 21 of the constitution and is part of right to life now we are going to look at succession and inheritance. What do we mean by succession? Succession is the devolution of a deceased person's property or estate. There is two types of succession. One is testatory succession and two interstate succession. Testatory succession is when a person dies leaving behind a will. Interstate succession is when a person dies without a will. In such case, the devolution of his property will depend upon the personal law of succession. Succession of property, as I earlier said, is when a deceased person dies by leaving a will. The will will mention the persons upon whom his property should devolve. The person upon whom the de property devolves are known as the beneficiary. The beneficiary may be a member of the family, relative or could be a friend or any other person. In a will, property may be devolved upon two or more persons, but it is very important that the will is very clearly worded so that there is no dispute after the deceased death. Every clause in the will should very clearly say who should very clearly say who a particular property devolves upon. The property should also very unambiguously be described. 
For example, a deceased person may bequeath his flat in Santa Cruz to son A and his flat in Bandra to son B. Or he may bequeath a particular property in two shares to two beneficiaries. Who is a testator? A testator is the person who makes the will, namely the person whose property has to be distributed after his death. As I earlier mentioned, under a will, property may be bequeathed to any person, but this is not so under the Muslim personal law. The Muslim personal law clearly states that only one third of the property may be bequeathed under will. The remaining two-third must go to his legal heirs except if the legal heirs have consented otherwise. This provision is extremely important as it ensures that all the legal heirs get some part of the deceased property and none of them are disinherited. What are the essentials of a will? One, it should be in writing and as I've earlier mentioned, it should, the writing should be very clear so that it doesn't result in misinterpretation after the death. It should be dated. A will should be dated. If a person dies leaving behind two wills, it is the provisions of the second will which will be applied and implemented. A will should be signed by the maker, that is the testator. It should be signed in the presence of two witnesses. These two witnesses should be of sound mind and they should be adults. They should be present when the testator is signing the will. It is important that the will mention that the testator is of sound mind and he has not been under anybody's influence or coercion because very often wills are challenged on the ground that the testator did not know what he was signing or that it was not made of his free will and volition. He made it under coercion or influence of somebody else. Interstate succession. Interstate succession deals with devolution of property or estate of a person upon his death when such person has died without leaving behind a will. In such case, the personal law of the deceased person will apply. A personal law of the deceased person contains a list of legal heirs who would be the beneficiaries of that particular property and the share of each legal heir is also mentioned. It will mention who the legal heirs of a deceased wife are, who the legal heirs of a deceased husband is, who the legal heir of a single male or a single female, all that is covered under the personal law. Hindus are governed under the Hindu Succession Act 1956, whereas Muslims are governed under the Shariat law. Parsis, Christian Jews and those married under the Special Marriage Act 1954 are governed by the Indian Succession Act 1925. Indian Succession has, Act has two parts dealing with intestate succession. One is the part which governs Parsis and the other is the part which governs those other than Parsis. So now I've given you a brief outline with regards to adoption. We've also seen that now a family can adopt under the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015. It is a secular law with regards to adoption. We've also seen the issue of succession and inheritance, both testate and intestate succession. The most important thing I would like to say that when making a will, the testator should be very clear that he's abided with all the essentials of a will so that the will is not declared invalid and the will, each provision should be very clearly worded so there is no confusion. For any further details, you may look at my text. Thank you.